We have to understand that Myanmar is big market for China. Moreover there at least 200,000 Chinese are permanent resident of Myanmar and have lived there since 1982. Myanmar built a huge EPZ area for expatriates, approximately 30 million acres of land in bordering Rakhine State. The EPZ zone is built with the help of Chinese government. Affluent Chinese billionaires invested in this special economic zone with ease and a simple interest rate. Expansionary nations like China, India, Russia, USA, UK and others will not make the mistake of handing over the Myanmar market. Due to a simple mistake on China's part, Myanmar's Yadana gas project went to France, USA and Thailand. The Yadana gas field is an offshore gas field in the Andaman Sea. It is located about 60 kilometers offshore to the nearest landfall in Myanmar. The Yadana gas field is an offshore gas field in the Andaman Sea. It is located about 60 kilometers 37 mile offshore to the nearest landfall in Myanmar. Along the Thailand border with Myanmar the Karen ethnic group has suffered persecution, torture and land grabbing as for the gas field project from 1988 to 2009. But since the Karens were Buddhists, and could easily take shelter in Thailand and Malaysia, the level of this torture was far less than the persecution and torture of the Rohingya. In order to prevent exclusive Chinese dominance in Myanmar, there will be a lot of adulation by India who will offer gifts, subsidies or Indian goods at nominal prices. Even Myanmar does not want to be bound by this flattering nature of India, but India will consider Myanmar a friend due to her own interest of Kaladin project. The Kaladin Multimodal Transit Transport Project is a project that will connect the eastern Indian seaport of Kolkata with Sitway Seaport in Rakhine State, Myanmar by sea. In Myanmar, it will then link Sitway Seaport to Paletwa, Chin State via the Kaladin River boat route, and then from Paletwa by road to Mizoram State in northeast India. Moreover the Indian businessmen have their own interest too, as parts of Rakhine State is enriched with minerals, such uranium. Myanmar is modernizing its navy and naval bases with the help of the military and the Chinese navy. The UK trains the Myanmar army. This scares India and causes them to be very friendlier with Myanmar and turns its back to Bangladesh. The reason for modernization of Burmese naval bases is an essential aspect of the Obor Silk Road project is the construction of a modern road corridor from the Iraq into the Indian Ocean. When the Obor Corridor is completed, China will put pressure on India from both directions, land and sea. India is the biggest buyer of Israeli arms in the world. Naturally India is going to seek Israel's help in its protection. Israel will also keep this trail through India in this region. In the Rakhine Special Economic Zone, the U.S. investor George Soros made huge investments in the gas extraction sector. Soros is known throughout the world as a middleman for Israel's interest. India is not concerned about the Israel's investment in the region. India's role is very passive and jubilant in this regard. All birds of same feather flock together, so Soros has very good understanding with the Chinese government and has made huge investments within China. India will do anything to prevent China's dominance in the region. Alongside the friendly gestures with Bangladesh and Myanmar it could invite the U.S. to have naval bases in Bangladesh or in Myanmar. Both USA and India have a long-term desire to control the South Seas and Southeast regional politics. Both of these nations want to have a share and control of the Bay Bengal region that has a sea border with Myanmar and Bangladesh. Further both nations, along with China and Russia, want to have control of the minerals in Rakhine. The U.S. is also looking for a new place for its military base as there is pressure to remove its base from Philippines. So its eyes on Myanmar and parts of Bangladesh region. Russia's political goal in this region is to deter the U.S. from making a military base. Moreover it is trying to ensure India does not become pro-American. Russia who is old ally will attempt to keep strengthening the relationship. Russia is in tacit support of Myanmar. Myanmar is constantly violating our borders and airspace due to support by these superpowers and regional powers. But Bangladesh has shown significant patience and was not provoked by the constant efforts of the Myanmar military. We want to have a peaceful solution. Dialogue is, no doubt, one of the steps that must be taken. Bangladesh must play its card wisely. It is a tough diplomatic task but a doable one. As mentioned, India shall try to engage the U.S., but then the game changes and it becomes a use China affair, while Bangladesh and the Rohingyas become a sideshow. So diplomacy, soft or hard, is the only solution now. Our objective is to repatriate the Rohingyas to Myanmar. We are trying to unveil a new horizon in the east but failed to catch the Ovoras built by China. 
In my opinion this is due to our too keenness in propagating Islamization, which has led to scorn from both West and Nad East. Now we need to reflect on who we are and what we can do. Selim Sherry is a retired professor of economics at Algonquin College, Ottawa, Canada and a researcher on politics in South Asia.